And if I might put it as clearly as I possibly can in a single sentence, critical race theory keeps tearing apart everything that Jesus died to bring together. Uh, in your book, you have a section that's called How an Evangelical Church Goes Woke. I'd love to talk about that. Um, you you tell a story of a friend of yours uh, where uh, the church had an all-white staff, but the congregation is diverse, reflecting the makeup of the neighborhood. Um, everybody, white, black, blue-collar, white-collar, professional factory workers, all assemble, focus on the gospel, worship the Lord together. And then you tell the account that your friend gave about when the chaos and culture broke out. Um, talk, talk a little bit about that, because I think that the reason I'm interested in, in your thoughts on this is that back when I was researching progressive Christianity, yes, progressive Christianity was very social justice oriented. And I mean that in like the critical social justice, not biblical justice uh, type of idea. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, you had evangelical churches that were doctrinally sound. And then when the George Floyd thing happened, you started to see otherwise doctrinally sound evangelical churches start to embrace this kind of wokeness that the progressive church had been embracing for quite a while. And, I, I, you know, I wonder if that's not a bit of a Trojan horse for this these kinds of ideas in the evangelical church. So talk about how does an evangelical church go woke? Well, let me give you a little bit of background. It used to be in the 80s and even the 90s, we were working towards uh, racial unity. And just so that your listeners know, at the Moody Church where I served for 36 years, and I'm sure that this is still true today, on any given Sunday, we had more than 70 different countries of origin represented. And we rejoiced in that because according to Revelation 5, Around the throne, there were going to be people from every tongue and people and nation. So we were working toward what was called racial rec uh, reconciliation. But critical race theory came apart and tore everything apart. Mm. And what happened with the death of uh, George Floyd, a tragic death indeed, is suddenly Many churches decided to get on the bandwagon, as I reference in the book, and as you quote, and now they began to see one another in oppositional terms. Mm -hmm. So whites were being blamed, and you have whiteness over against blackness. And of course, social justice does not take into account the human heart. It's all based on skin color. So you know, I, I quote, for example, from uh, the book, you know, White Fragility, about what happens there when suddenly whiteness becomes the enemy and not true, not true racism, but just whiteness. So what happened in this church that I described in the passage that you referenced, what happened is the pastor decided that in order to keep up with a culture, and he thought he needed to do this to make deference to the minorities, he began to divide the church with a form of social justice that destroys rather than builds, mm -hmm. where there is blaming and where there is shaming. Now, I'm glad we're on this topic. And the reason is because the Bible has an answer for this that cannot be found in critical race theory. Critical race theory can only tear apart. It can never build together. It's, it's intended to divide the races. Saul Alinsky, of course, here in Chicago, began that in the 70s. He began to see that Marxism could be applied to race and destroy the culture because you need chaos before you get a Marxist uh, state. You know, through the providence of God, when my wife and I were in Colorado, in a swimming pool, I met a man who worked for Saul Alinsky, he said, we had many good ideas to help the under-resourced communities of Chicago, but Alinsky stopped us. He said, don't solve problems, use them. So what has happened is we have the tearing apart of the various skin colors, the various ethnicities, rather than bringing them together. Now, how does the Bible answer this? Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. We have to take this slowly because this is profound. Mm -hmm. 
In Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free, Scythian, Scythians, they were marauders that went through the country, barbarians who sometimes acted barbarically, but Christ is all and in all. What Paul said is this, Jews don't become Greeks, Greeks don't become Jews, barbarians don't become Scythians, but there is a transcendent unity in Christ that we have to work together for. And if I might put it as clearly as I possibly can in a single sentence, critical race theory keeps tearing apart everything that Jesus died to bring together. It makes us see one another, shout at one another across racial differences and racial walls. And really biblically, the Bible would say, we really don't have a skin problem, we have a sin problem. And that's what needs to be dealt with. But of course, today, it's all a matter of skin. I have to add this. In the book, White Fragility, you remember the author says that uh, blacks cannot be racist because uh, they're not in power. Now, imagine what is she is saying. She's saying that the answer to racism is for one power group to overcome another power group. It's that conflict. Christianity says, no, the answer to racism is to bow humbly together at the foot of the cross and then get up from our knees and ask, what can we do together to make things better? Mm -hmm.